everybody. Welcome to Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza. We're broadcasting live from Phoenix, Arizona, soon to be Florida. That's correct. We are moving set to a new location to be even closer to Dr. Andre and Jenny and the Faith team down there in Florida. We're very excited and we'll be telling you more details later. But as for today's broadcast, this is going to be a different and amazing broadcast. Look, today I'm bringing on two pastors who are personal very good friends of mine who run an incredible church in Pasadena, Maryland called Redemption House Life Center. Now you might think, oh, I don't want to tune in today. It's just a bunch of pastors. Who cares? You know what? These people are different. And what they're doing is the heart of God. They are bringing in the homeless. They're going to the highways and the byways. They're touching the broken, the addicted. And God's glory is landing on them and their church. Favor is opening up to them. And the presence of the Lord is always at their church because of the stance that they have taken to go out and help the homeless, the broken, the drug addict, and the helpless people, the orphan, the widow. Okay, We all need to have the same heart as these people, Pastor David and Tracy have, because man, that is the heart of God. So I want you to stay tuned today. I want you to share the broadcast. I want you to tell people to get online because you're going to learn a lot about what God wants us to do in this hour. Okay. And if we do these things that touch the very core of the heart of God, then God is going to visit us with finances, with favor, with positioning, with influence, with open doors, with glory. And you're going to see an explosion happen in your life. So share the broadcast. I see people are online chatting right now. Guys, I need every single one of you to share the broadcast right now so that we can have people uh, tune in today and be blessed. Okay, now before I bring them on today, I want to show you today's amazing selfie miracle testimony video. Look, this, this testimony has some very basic but powerful precepts for you to follow so that you can get your miracle. Wait till you hear what this woman did to get a complete healing in her body. Let's check it out right now. Okay, what's your name? Debbie. Debbie, you had a surgery scheduled. Why? In October of um, 2020, I discovered that I had serious hip pain on both sides, and I could, I grimaced just walking. I, um, it was so bad that by January, I was at an orthopedic office, and they, I'm just thinking it's going to go away, and the diagnosis was that I had osteoarthritis in both hips and I needed two hip replacements. It shocked me. I've always been very active, never had a lot of sickness, and I was really taken back by it. Um, I said, I don't want surgery. Uh, they said, well, you, we can give you injections until you decide to have your surgery. Whatever. <laughs> and um, I said, okay. I had hip injections in the month of February of last year. I was really pressing into God, like, what do I do? I really don't want to continue the injections. I don't want surgery. I want to be able to walk. Um, it was bone on bone. I had no cushion whatsoever. And um, I, um, I got to May, and the injections wore off because they said they'll last about three to six months. We don't really want you getting them that often because they start breaking down, you know, inside the hip joint. And I'm like, wow, this isn't a good picture at all. And never thought I would end up here. Um, and in June, I was visiting a church. I made my way to the front at the end of the service, and I um, had an altar minister pray with me. I said, I need a key for my healing. I really don't want to go forward with what the doctors are telling me. And she prayed with me, and the Holy Spirit said, a key to your healing is to take communion every day. Amen. Woo, I'd never done that ever in my life. I mean, my husband and I just didn't take communion at home. And um, so I went out and bought the matzo bread, you know, at Publix. And um, anyway, I started taking communion and a month later, this is in June, and a month later, I'm in my kitchen 
And I'd faithfully been doing that. And I, I heard the voice of the Lord say, start drinking more water. So well, I'm like, I probably don't drink enough water. Um, I went out and bought a Brita pitcher the next day and I started filling it up with water. And so I kept, I started drinking the water. I'm still doing the communion and a month later, I realized I was completely pain free. I, I didn't have the surgery at the end of last year. I'm still pain free. I, I climbed Stone Mountain with a friend. Um, a couple of months ago, I didn't know if it was a wise thing to do. I used to climb the mountain a lot with my husband, but I'm thinking Stone Mountain, granite. You know, I'm going to have really serious side effects after I get done with this, but I had no pain after I did that. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Look, we picked this video specifically so that you can hear how easy your breakthrough can be. Take communion every single day, guys. I was teaching on communion when that woman came up to me to tell me that story. And she was like, I just want to prove that what you're teaching is totally biblical and has power for a miracle. So if you got an issue in your body, take communion every single day and don't just throw it in your mouth ha hazardly. Okay, sit down, worship the Lord, take time to be in his presence, and then take communion and receive the miracle. When you take communion, you're doing it in remembrance of what Christ accomplished on the cross when by his stripes you were healed. And look, did you hear the thing she said in the natural? Drink more water. You know that they say... Tons of diseases, pain, disorders, inflammation, things that are happening in the body would actually be healed naturally if we all drank more water. I'm preaching to myself right now, okay? So up your water intake drastically. Take communion, and I bet you many of you will get a healing just by doing that, amen? Now look, if you've had a miracle through this ministry, through our broadcast, through uh, at one of our meetings or something, please do a selfie miracle testimony video. Get your phone out, put it in a landscape position, do two minutes of what was wrong with you, what the doctor said, how it affected you, what kind of pain levels you had, and then what happened when God touched you, amen? And then send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. That's selfies at katiesouza.com. We're working on a better system as we speak. <laughs> I keep saying that it doesn't happen, but it will. So stand by for it until then. Send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. Okay, don't forget we have Faith Now, guys. Wow. I know Faith Now is going to grow even more once I get down there to Florida and uh, Dr. Andre and Jenny and I are hanging out all the time. We're going to have even more to offer, but wow, we have Newsmax now. Newsmax News. We've got Katie TV. We got Sid Roth's network. We got Kenneth's Victory TV. Okay. And don't forget these, when, when you sign up for this, it's only $1.99 a month. It helps us with our prison ministry. Now we are going back into prisons. Dog the Bounty Hunter and Francie and I and our whole team are going back into the prisons and so we need your support just think you could enable us to be able to take the entire team with our worship with miracle working power with dog and francie with everything by you just signing up for a dollar 99 on faith now it's a big deal go to faithnow.net that's faithnow.net sign up for the monthly automatic program put KDTV on the promo code and you're going to get a month for free and you're going to be part of all of the amazing outreaches that we are planning to go back into prisons. I am so excited. I can't wait to see that what happens. This prison that we're coming up on, we're going to death row, baby. Death row. And it's going to be amazing. Men's and women's prison. So help us out and sign up for faith now. Okay, guys, are you ready? Going to bring on two people who I love with all my guts. Okay, Pastor David and Tracy Whittington. My peeps, what's up? <laughs> hey guys. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. How's it how's it going? Man, this is such a great uh, delight to be with you. And uh, we were just listening to the testimony. I mean, we see that all the time. Every time you come, 
Uh, and so this broadcast is just one of those that should just build people's faith to the next level because we're seeing powerful things happen as people are just opening up their heart to faith and watching God move in their life. And we see that every time you come. And I know you're seeing that through this broadcast. And I'm really telling you. Heart. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. But what really blesses our heart when you come, the supernatural and the faith that, that our, our, what we call our, our family, you know, our congregation, they, they talk about it for weeks. Everything that you teach on, they talk about it. Sometimes they'll come back and ask us questions. And it's like their faith goes to like a higher level, like every time you come, and then we hate to see you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys' place is like one of my favorites to come to, right? I mean, the glory realm is there. I have to, David, I always have to run away from your wife because she tries to let, when she lays hands on me, I end up on the floor and then I can't even preach. I'm like, get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> well, that's, that's what's so funny about it because, you know, we're talking today really about uh, the heart of the father and uh, we were one of our favorite scriptures about this is Matthew 25. And people like we have to practice the word. If we work the word, you know, we're going to get God results. We're going to get biblical kingdom results. And I feel like a lot of times we're wondering, hey, why isn't it happening for me? Like it's happening for Katie or like it's happening for others. Uh, one time you just got to be honest. I feel like uh, are we working the word? Are we doing the word? Because. You're going into prisons. Guess what? Matthew 25 is all about visiting the prisoners. It's mm. about feeding those that are hungry. It's about clothing the naked. It's about helping those that that need something and realizing that you're actually being a conduit of God. And uh, I think that that's incredible that you're going back into prisons. And uh, I think that's just the heart of God. And you're going to see, I feel like you're going to see a massive increase in the glory of God on the on the broadcast and even on your personal life, because when we do what God commissioned us to do, we see results that only God can give us. And I think it's phenomenal to just be the delight of the Father. So that's our heart, Matthew 25. And that's what we've been practicing uh, through all kinds of ways. But, you know, it's our privilege to, to serve the Lord and whatever way he'd give us to touch another person's life mm. like he did for us. Mm. That's, you know, one of the things I love about you guys is is when I'm around you, I actually feel like I, I have to ask myself, am I even saved? Because, uh, the you know, people that are that don't know you need to understand how far you guys go to walk out Matthew 25 and to go into the highways and byways. I mean, you guys constantly have had a full house of people living with you, even like sleeping on the floor of your room or in the same room with you guys when you didn't have any room for everybody for years and years and years. I mean, talk about how that started and why you guys have this, like you have a small tribe that you guys have with you night and day. Well, I, I guess the first thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, just receiving the love of the Father. I mean, He's so good, and He loves us. And when you truly receive that love for Him, it's, it's not even a question to simply give back love. I mean, we all receive it. We receive it in different ways, right? But a lot of times, you know, we have to remember our past. You know, just remember where we came from. Because remembering that helps us remember what the Lord is asking of us. Mm -hmm. The change, the transformation, the life giving, the breath that God pours into us. Right. It's just so amazing to be in love with the Father. And, you know, there's a scripture that says that we'll have the poor in spirit with us. And sometimes that means that people don't really know how to change because they've been taught or not taught or However that looks like, you know, um, yeah, I just, it's just really hard because they, they are smart and they know the difference of, of being judged in their circumstance or truly being loved in their circumstance. 
And the way it started was, you know, we were out and we were praying for people. And, you know, I would give people money. I would buy them food. And I'm thinking because, you know, I became a single mom. I had three uh, relationships that, that overdosed on me. And I became a single mom. And, and I was in need. And I'm thinking, I love prayers. I need prayers. But everything inside of me was screaming, Katie. I need more than prayers right now. I need some action. I need mm. someone to take me in. I need a home. I need a place to rest my head, to think, to pray, to get back on my feet. Mm. And that's when the Lord said, that's exactly what you're going to do. When I was a little girl, my mom, she used to bartend. And this is where I first saw it, right? She would bring people home. She bartended at Bowen Alley for part-time money because she wanted to put me through Catholic school. So um, mm. she would bring people home because she would feel so bad serving them alcohol and they would get drunk. And she wouldn't let them to drive. She felt so bad, but yet she still did the job because the money was good. So a lot of times we compromise our, we compromise our circumstances. And in a sense, you know, I got older, I realized that is what my mom did, but she compromised for the, for the better of what she wanted to give us, you know, her and I, because my dad had passed when I was eight. So I watched this and my sister would get uh, upset because there was a strange person in our house. And I would say to my sister, mom, she's trying to help somebody, protect somebody from getting hurt. So I seen all this. So then I, you know, the Lord was showing me like sometimes, I, you know, prayer is important. I'm not taking anything away from prayer, but so, just sometimes people need prayer and they need more than that. So that's when we started opening up our homes and just bringing people home. I mean, I would go up to the street and walk the streets and, and run into, um, you know, ladies, uh, you know, that, that were selling themselves, you know, and I would say, you know, please come home with me. The Lord desires us. He desires you. No matter what your situation is right now, his mm -hmm. desire is for you. It is towards you. He wants you. He died for you. And they would come home. And of course, it's heartbreaking when you know some don't don't make it. But then you have the reward that the Lord just pours in and the reward and they partner with him and they make it. And, you know, the one making it, you know, Jesus left the 99 to go after the one and the one making it is worth more than a million. Yes. And when you see that, it's just so fulfilling. And I'm, I'm addicted to his love and I'm addicted to changing people's lives, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, this started for you guys, even on your wedding night, right? Tell me about the wedding uh, night. Can we talk about that? <laughs> well, you know, hey, this is that they say the wedding, the wedding is for the wife. But uh, when we, when it came time to, uh, it was getting late and our friend, our kids had their friends with them. And, and it was just like, you know what, come on home with us because really we, you know, as a step parent and some of you guys out there might be really struggling in this area, right? Because we're talking about really selflessness and being selfless in this day and age, even in the church, we talk about selflessness. It's mm -hmm. like, it sounds different. Like, well, why would you let somebody move into your house? Or why would you give out of, uh, if you have your own needs? And why would you uh, bring somebody home on your own honeymoon? Because the reality is that that's what the kids needed. The reality is that's what that prostitute needed. The reality is uh, that's what that single mom needs. And when we think about it, it's, yes, it's inconvenient. But the question is not, is it inconvenient? The question is, would Jesus do that for you? And because we're, when we think about the heart, like most people are like, hey, I'll pray for you. Go and be fed. Mm -hmm. I'll pray for you. Go and find warmth. I'll pray for you. You know, you know, go and, and, and figure it out on your own instead of, you know, what? I, I, there's something I can do that will change your circumstances to show you what love looks like. And so that's how the kids ended up with their friends as almost like. Hey, nothing's changing. We're we're upgrading our family. Now we have this single dad who loves you guys and they didn't understand honeymoons or nothing. So you can imagine it was it was just a, it was a sacrifice of love. And frankly, we have to get to a place where we have to put our own lives on the altar again 
have as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. We have to be a people that exemplify what love looks like. And we have to stop using cliches and words and having big language with small action. And I feel like the, the church, oh. we've almost gotten into a place where if we could say the right things, then we think that we're doing the right things. But the reality is when we're doing the right things, our life is so fruitful. And so now we have multiple houses and we're able to see what God is doing through uh, through our yes. And I believe that's a critical path for every believer to make room for Jesus to be Lord, to say, touch yes. that one, talk that one, take them home, love on them, uh, give them food, uh, you know, go out of your way, drive them to church, drive them to a deliverance ministry, drive them to uh, some kind of counseling, help your fellow neighbor. Because who's the good Samaritan? It wasn't any of the religious people. And he was Mm. the one that was blessed. He was the one that Jesus exemplified. And they're like, oh, we hate Samaritans. And so sometimes I think that these things are left out. And I think the best way to say it is that when we look at what what kind of things do we preach about in church, right? If you give a prophet a cup of water in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. A good man gets a good man's reward. And it says, but if you do these to the least or to these little ones, some translations say, when you give it to somebody that can't give back, Mm -hmm. God will not forget you and he'll repay. So I feel like the presence of God and the payment of heaven and the favor of God all follow our big yes to exemplify love to the people that no one else is saying yes to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. so our heart, Katie, and we just, we're so privileged to be a part of that. Can, can you can even I, can count the amount of people that have come through your your home? And, and how many years has it been you guys doing this? 20? <laughs> 20, 20 years. Yeah, about 20. Yeah, we've been yeah, doing 20. it a little over 20 years. And uh, last we counted, we were well over uh, 600, 700 people. No, we, no. we haven't really. There's no way to count that. No, no, the last we counted that we were, that was years ago when we counted that number, Katie. Years ago, I think my daughter was a teenager and she's the one that said, Mom, this is how many people that have lived with us. This is how many people I shared room my room with, Mom, how many of their kids, you know? So that was years ago. It's way past that now. Oh my gosh. It's now, just- guys, as you're listening to this story, you have to understand, I'm, I'm not talking about them bringing in, you know, people from the streets into like homes that they have purchased and bought just for this purpose, though they are doing that project now. Okay. I'm talking about their own personal home, their bedroom, their children's bedroom, their entire house, their living room, just swarming with people that they went out and snatched from the street, snatched out of drug addiction, snatched from prostitution, snatched from the trouble, snatched from the abusive relationship. Okay. I mean, this is, Honestly, again, guys, I, I have when I've heard your stories, I actually had to ask myself, God, am I even saved? Because I have not done anything so brave and so selfless as as you guys have. And I know that's why when I go to your place, I mean, I've seen we've seen metal screws disappear, metal wires disappear. Um, I walked the last time I was there was just just a little while ago. As soon as I walked in the door, a lady with uh, that had her private parts mutilated, she got a miracle. There was. 200 people that got healed of massive 20 plus years of gout and rheumatoid and I mean somebody who was born with a, a defiguration and short legs grew up and and you yeah. know wow and it happens because the glory has landed in your house because of you guys doing what you do well, I, I really believe that with you, Katie, because we're seeing some crazy things. Uh, but all we have to do is realize that God is wanting to do these things in our life. And if you say, like, if you're online right now and you say, well, I'm not getting the results that I feel like, you know, I've been hearing preached about or the ones that I'm reading about in the word. I want you to know that we're here to pray for you and break that off of you. Because faith without works is dead. And we're wondering why we're getting dead results. But the, the truth is that as we say yes, the, the smile of heaven 
Uh, he's already delighted in you, but he wants to outlet through you to enhance every aspect of your life. And so I pray if that's you and you're on this broadcast that you would start thinking about how can I apply what God's given me? Everybody's not going to you know, bring people into their house. But I'm going to tell you something. Some people are like, well, that sounds really scary. I guess the question is, who's the keeper of our life? Because I could drive down the street and bad things can happen just as easy and statistically pro- possible. Do we not drive? What are we thinking about? My son, uh, who's who uh, basically I've adopted over the years, he just graduated as a first generation uh, graduate and my daughter's graduated from college and now both my kids and my son just graduated with his degree in DDS. He's uh, got his PhD in dentistry and he's sitting here growing up with all these people and he's thinking about how can I go to the mission field? How can I be a, a blessing? How can I, we open up uh, stadium events? And you know what? When people start seeing the sacrifice that you're willing to make, they're going to jump because they've been longing for results and action and being the people that God's called them to be. And I'm telling you, a church is rising right now. And I believe that the whole face of the church is changing right before our eyes because we're tired of living in dead works. We're tired of living without results. So if that's you, I feel like we need to pray for you right now. Yeah, Tracy, yeah. why don't you just pray? Come on. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you, Father, that they burn for you, God. I thank you that they see Jesus and people, Father God, and that they remember not not to see what the world teaches them to see, and that's the circumstance and what someone might be doing, but to actually see the Jesus in that person and to see what Jesus is saying about that person and to even help teach, be nurturers, to help teach that person to see in themselves in a new way to upgrade our belief systems, God, to upgrade the faith. Now, just like Katie said, faith. Now it can be now transformation can happen now in a snap of a finger. Holy spirit can encounter and everything changes. Yes, God. So I thank you Lord for that intimate time. Mm. I thank you that people go before your, before you or just before the throne room and they just, Seek you and seek your face, not pop up for anything that you can do or give, but because of who you are, just because of who you are. And we thank you, Lord. We send out a hunger in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope you receive that. Wow. I receive it for myself. Amen. I mean, look, I help a lot of people, but I don't have 600 people tramping through my house. Okay. I mean, that is that takes special people like yourself amen <laughs> i want to hear i want to hear the funnest story tell me one super fun story out of all the people coming in and out and all the craziness and all the love and all the acceptance and everything else let me hear one crazy story oh well you sam sam was a dear friend of ours and uh I'm gonna, uh, can we, okay, we can have two. If you can make yeah, two yeah, do two. Yeah. You're fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, again. So uh, Sam was uh, was really trying to go back out and do the wrong Ooh. things and just having uh, a fiending, if you know what I'm talking about. He was trying to go back out. And he's like, give me my money. Give me my money. And he starts attacking my wife. Thankfully, I was at work. And uh, it wouldn't have been maybe as pretty because I would have wanted to defend my wife. But she could take care of herself. I'll tell you what. Uh, I think her and Katie, uh, this is why they get along so well. Come he's on. a tough girl that I've been around. And uh, so Sam says, you need to give me my money and tell him what you said. Okay, so uh, we held people's cards. They got money on their cards, and we would hold them because otherwise when they're not totally over their addiction yet, you know, they would get their cards take off. And so we, we learned to hold their cards. So he came in the house. He knew his money came on a card. The money, you know, was causing the addiction to rise up. And I said, Sam, I'm not going to give you your card. He didn't physically attack me. Verbally, he kept, uh, you know, being just, very aggressive. just being very aggressive, kind of, I did feel a little back to the corner for a minute, but I wasn't afraid. And I looked at him and I pointed my finger and I walked toward him to back him up. 
And I said, Sam, you get on your knees. And if Jesus tells you to go smoke crack, I'll give you all your money. And if he tells you that, then you tell me he said that, and you can have your money, and you can go. So uh, he actually got down on his knees and started praying, and he got up. He looked at me, walked up the steps, didn't say one word. And you know what I did? I said, I guess Jesus don't want you to go smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was, uh, it was a neat little story. And he got to realize that addiction was trying to get a hold of him. You know, because I took him to Jesus. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> So that's a really funny one because, you know, sometimes we get pushed around by this world and by people. And we need to realize the authority we carry. Like she just stood her ground and said, why don't you, why don't you pray about this? You take this to prayer right now. And if you tell me what you want to yeah. do is off. What if, what if we dealt with our, our, our relationships that way? Hey, listen, you're coming at me. Why don't you take this to the Lord and tell me what he says? Like get yourself out of the equation. Cause most of the time they just got problems with themselves and yeah. you get, get them to the Lord. You're going to do a lot better off. So yes, that was a really funny story, but uh, oh. another fun. Um, well, go ahead. Tell us. Oh, oh, okay. So we had a really bad snowstorm. And we had uh, oh, two twin sisters that live with us. And I'm not sure um, what what was the medical term. So uh, do you remember? Yeah, basically they had some slight uh, mental mental issue and, and it just caused their cognitive feature, uh, function to be limited, like Asperger's, something like that. So they were uh, trying to help with the... But, but we were watching, and over time, the Lord really transformed them. They got off their medication and everything. Yeah. But I don't advise that to anybody. Uh, it's a process sometimes, or it can be an instant deliverance, but you need to know. Yeah. But but anyway, so uh, we were downstairs, and sometimes we stay up really late. We'll sleep in just a little bit. And uh, they decided to shovel all of the cars off for us. They wanted to do it out of love. But they used the snow shovels. Oh, and no. And so I had a really nice Lexus sports coupe and uh, go out. And I'm like, oh, cool. Everybody shoveled the snow. That's nice. And then I look at my car and I see these massive scratches like Wolverine just took his claws <laughs> down my hood. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. What kind of, and as I'm getting ready to say very ni not nice things, like. Basically, you're going to say, what kind of person would do this? Yeah. As I'm getting ready to say, my wife says, honey, they're just trying to help. And I'm like, my head just exploded instantaneously <laughs> as I'm thinking, like, who would shovel your car with an aluminum shovel and scratch your whole hood up to help you out? I thought, oh, my God. Lord. I need more. I need more humility. I need more. I need Jesus right now. And I'll tell you what, these are the kind of things that happen in life that uh, you can't even begin to understand, explain, but, but you almost begin to realize that, that that car is totally replaceable, but your attitude is going to change everything about your life. And when and you start life. and and the way you love them and, or the way you attack them is going to actually create a lot of things for you or against you so oh, yeah. when we're trying to help people we have to realize that they're the goal they're the their their heart is so precious to the lord and here we are basically we're supposed to be eunuchs and in, uh, in other words we're supposed to be hands-free just preparing the bride for the bridegroom we're supposed to be preparing people for the for the father to come in and sweep them off their feet so we're not supposed to be getting involved in in uh and manipulating these people or, or taking advantage of people. And I'll tell you what, sometimes it turns around and bites you, but it is so rewarding when you see lives change. Uh, you know, we we have so many stories. We we we've paid people to come to church that were on the side of the road trying to hustle uh for favor sexual favors. Uh, then we brought them to church and said, we'll pay you for three hours if you come to church. I said, but what would you make in three hours out here on the street? Just give me a number. And they give me a number. I say, listen, if you come to church with me, I promise you're going to find Holy Spirit in the love of Jesus. God is going to meet you there. 
I said, I will give you to sacrifice your time to come with me. And trust me, I will give you that income just because I know that's how much he wants you to come with me. And and she came and was touched by the Lord. And, and you know, these yeah. stories are like on and on and on. You know, people at the courthouse, they're they're trying to pay their bills. And, and, and Tracy stands up and says, I'll pay it. And then it's like. Well, the judge, do that? The, the judge went a little crazy because he's like, who are you? Who are you? And the guy up there, he's turned around. He's looking at me. He's like, I don't know who she is. I don't know who she is. And I just said, "Your nobody in this courtroom knows me, but God told me to pay his debt. And oh. then he started, I, and he said, what can I do in exchange, uh, you know, for, for doing this for me? I, with that way, I didn't, like, I mean, I don't know what the outcome could have been afterwards or whatever. And I said, the only thing I ask is that you come to church, that you come to church yeah. seven times because I know in faith seven times the wall's coming down. And sure enough, this guy got completely transformed, married now, in church, has kids, his whole family saved. He's still saved. And it just was a radical time that just radically changed his life. Sometimes we got to do some radical things that are, that are just selfless. And other times we got to sow seeds ahead with people. And we always got to remember by our actions to make sure we're bringing unity. Yes. If, if people have made a pathway or blazed a trail in their relationship with Christ, we have to be so tender because one thing we could do could trigger everything backwards and that could all be lost. And we don't want to see that happen as a body, as moms, as dads, as lovers of the king. Yeah. We want to see them continually go forward. And sometimes that means you say you're sorry, even if you're not wrong, because they just don't understand right now. And you just reconcile and be a peacekeeper because blessed are the peacemakers. They shall inherit the kingdom. Yeah, come on. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, I am speechless when I hear all these stories. It, it, honestly, guys, let me... Let me hear from you. Chat in right now. Could you even come close to doing this? I, I honestly have to question my own self. It's like, I want to I want to be more like this. This is how Christ wants us to be. This is the way we see the glory manifest. Like I said, whenever I go to their church, miracles, 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 because they've already cultivated their atmosphere with their sacrifice, with their love of these people. I knew I was in the right church the first time I ever stepped into Redemption House because I walked in and there was a heroin addict totally, totally high in the, in the, um, in the foyer who was like getting sick and like vomiting. And I'm like, I am in the right place. You know, most churches wouldn't even let somebody like that into the, into the sanctuary. I mean, this, it's a beautiful, beautiful. I love it. I love it. Look guys. I know that I think you guys should actually teach other people how to walk through something like this because I don't think people have any idea including the shovel sharpen shovel type experiences where <laughs> shovels sharpen your your soul down to a nub as you restrain a, your reaction to something like that yeah. but you know I mean this is something you need to teach and you actually have some word on that on how to help people navigate through cultivating a atmosphere a culture like this in their own lives yeah. Well, the beautiful thing about it, right? If you've ever heard some early Graham Cook, where he talks about being dead to yourself, you know, the, the goal of all these things is to be dead to yourself, alive to Christ. And we talk about like, it's no big deal. It's actually kind of hard to stay dead. Uh, we, we, we have a problem with uh, staying in that place where we're dead to ourselves and alive to Christ. But the only thing that keeps you alive in Christ is to realize how much more life there is. You know, many Christians are still thinking about the, like, is this sin? Is this good? Is this bad? Christians aren't even supposed to be thinking about that. And we're not supposed to be sin conscious. We're supposed to be a conscience of the profit that our life will bring to the Father. And when you're profit conscious, you do things that, gonna, that are going to glorify God, that are going to bring glory to the kingdom, that are going to illuminate God's love for the people. Wow. Those are the things that once you touch them, once you taste them, you begin to see, man, this is so much better to have this joy, to have this peace, to have this love. It's so much better. And I'll tell you, when, you, when you're when you in the God's presence, 
because uh, you've done well, because you've, you've, it's not, God's obviously pleased because of the sacrifice of Jesus. But when you're realizing I am an, in alignment with heaven, I'm in alignment with the word, it begins to do something inside of you that, that no one can explain, but you feel the, the liquid oil of heaven just flow over you like you're melting. And it's like, man, this is why I'm alive. And I want you to know, when you find the prophet of living for God and doing what he's called you to do, you're going to be so hooked that you're going to say, who else can I help? Uh, you know, have you ever seen where people would talk about uh, paying forward, you, you know, paying for the next guy's groceries or paying for the person behind him? It would get so contagious. He would start feeling, man, this feels really good to be a, a, a conduit of goodness. And I believe that most of us just need to prime the pump and you don't need to have, you know, somebody you don't trust move into your house and you might not be ready for that big move, but you know what? Pay somebody's bill, uh, invite them to church as a, uh, as a, so that they can experience the God that you serve, yes, yes. that they can be touched by the, the presence of God that you serve. And honestly, I think the key is, not just staying dead to yourself, but staying alive to the reality that God wants to pour out a spirit on everyone. He wants to touch lives. So we be tra- we are transformed by beholding that kind of goodness, by beholding the glory. And when we say the glory of God, uh, you know, he said, I'm going to make my goodness pass by you. In other words, God's goodness to Moses was what illuminated his face. It's what the glory of God and God's goodness are actually synonymous because when we behold God's goodness, we begin to be illuminated with his likeness because that's already on the inside of each one of us. Now he's trying to get what's on the inside to begin to permeate, to begin to manifest on and to begin to touch the world around us. And when we do that, guess what? We see his goodness and we behold it. We become likened unto him on the outside. We begin to glow on the outside. I need the treasure in me to be the treasure that's also on me for the world around me. So I think it's pretty easy. What do you think is a good way that people can um, really begin to step into uh, well, doing these things and experiencing that? Um, you mean like the shovel story? Like how to react, like that's one thing, or to actually start taking people in their homes. I think it's better to just start with like how can you how can you be be conscious of the way that you're loving people and the way we react because our relationships really need to go higher if we're gonna be who God's called us to be. Well, I'll just answer it from my own experience. Um, I feel like what I did was uh when I wanted to react. You know, I had to remember, or if I did react, and 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 you know, and all this is a great reminder for me even today, because you know I can go a good period of time and sometimes may have a moment, right? Yeah. And then I have to pull back and realize like that's not who I want to be, that's not who the Jesus died for me is like, in me. He's greater than that in me, and He's given me full authority to have complete discipline over myself. You know, and, 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 and the way you do that is you have to exercise that. So, like, if, if you're thinking something that's, um, you know, say, because we've been so programmed, like, like you know, anger, right? So anger comes to us like, like, like just something will happen and right away we want to be angry, right? But why? It's because we've been programmed that way. We have to upgrade our belief system and reprogram ourselves. So when that happens, we can't just settle for that. Mm. We have to talk to ourselves. We have to go before the Lord and we have to say, God, help me. That's not who I want to be. Why did I act like that? Mm -hmm. Help me change that. And we have to acknowledge it. The truth sets us free. We have to acknowledge that. And we have to know that the next time we get in a situation like that, then we have to just remember that I don't want to feel the way I felt when I acted that way the last time I acted that way. I want to walk away knowing that I pleased you father and knowing that I love my brother and sister well, because there's Jesus in them. And however I love them is how I love the father. 
that's so good you know oh my God. because the way you brother is actually the love that you have for for the father so yeah so it's critical that we remember that because we're talking about the fruit of self-control here right like not just reacting but asking god how would you what would you have me to say jesus said he didn't do anything unless the father was doing it yeah wouldn't that be awesome that we just return to some basics so i'm not going to say that because it's not what the father would say i'm not going to react that way because that's not how the father would react so it's almost like in, in the same with peace, you want uh, you you go into a storm of life. If you're uh, patterned to just mm-hmm. succumb to every storm, to get anxious, and I feel like there's so much anxiety and and just these programs that they, these these ways that we haven't really dealt with, because what we do is we're like, oh, that's just the way I was raised, and that's just the way uh, I was taught, and that's just how yeah. others reacted. And guess what? That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the author and the finisher. When we talk about our life, there's yes, only one yes. standard. The standard yes. is Jesus Christ yes. and the way he lived for the Father. And that is our standard. So so I want to say one more thing, if that's uh, okay. So, you know, the, the, the way we feel about something can be triggers, right? So mm-hmm. if we are doing things to help ourselves, to, to upgrade ourselves, to to react differently, to, you know, just approach things with a new mindset, right? We're going to feel the peace and we're going to feel so much better. When I was out using drugs, every disappointment triggered me because I didn't know how to handle disappointments, you know, but there was something inside that was calling me and it was calling me into truth and it was calling me. and, And the more I yielded to that, the more I took authority over things in my life, the more I saw, well, if I act like this, the enemy wants me to do this. So he can keep me in the palm of his hand. You know who's got me in the palm of his hand? Jesus Christ. That's where I'm always supposed to be, right in the palm of God's hand, nobody else's hand. And the more I did things that helped me <laughs> feel better or, or think clearer or do things, then the closer I am to the Lord, the more peace I have the triggers all faded away. It was like an instant deliverance over a period of nine months, nine months birthing. Like, think about that. No. Go ahead. My God. Look, guys, I'm going to have uh, Pastor David and Tracy pray for you in a minute, but I want you to think about that and even chat in your challenges as you're listening to this story. These are people that are talking about constantly, <laughs> constantly having to exercise, Ooh. exhibit, and enforce the Holy Spirit fruit of self-control. You think you got problems with your spouse or your kids or a couple people at your work? Can you imagine 600 people coming in and out and in and out of your life for 20 years, many of them spun and no fun, high to the high as a kite, like completely broken, a mess, like heavy, heavy babysitting jobs here. We're talking people who are are, are massively oppressed. And that's going to create swirls. That's going to create issues. And here David and and Tracy are saying, what do I do? How do I handle it? I don't get mad. I don't get upset. And when I do, I exercise self-control and I check myself before I wreck myself because I want to, I want to respond like the father. This is such a great example. We need to be doing this in all of our lives. We're struggling with with forgiving and letting go of offenses for a couple people. Now bring 600 people into your mix and see how you would act. I think it's beautiful what you guys have done. I think you guys have set an example that we all need to follow. It's like, wow, if you guys can handle that many swirls every single day for 20 years and that many kind of people, then, man, we need to do better for the few things that we have to deal with. We need to do much better. I want you guys to pray for people in just a second, but first I want to bring up that you have the Redemption House housing program called Missions for America program, correct? Yes. yes. We're going to put that graphic up on the board right now, guys. This is Redemption House. Each one reaches one. Missions for America. Tell us about this program that you're doing. Well, Missions for America is birthed in the fact that, you know, a lot of times we're doing missions work. We're going to other countries. But, man, there's so many people that are hurting right here. And we have to say there has to be something local. 
There has to be something that is helping the people right here. Uh, people are not able to get back into society. We've been doing uh, rescuing uh, people, girls, some guys from sex trafficking for two decades, but we don't. We didn't even know it had a it had a name, and it was popular now. So <laughs> the the reality is, if somebody needs help, the goal is let's bring them into a place where they can encounter the love of God, where they can experience the love of Jesus, and actually begin to see there's somebody that loves me. There's somebody that sees value in me. And see, this is what we have to realize. We're building something new. Missions for America is a place where the broken can become whole again, where they can, where the unloved can be loved, where people that have actually thought that nobody cared about them can be cared for. And think about what it's like when you've had to sell your body for, for, for just to have a rent, just to have a roof over your head, or just to have drugs for your life because of your addictions and your hangups. And think of everything you've been called and every name. We're reversing that by saying, no, that's not what the Father says about you. I don't care what anyone has said about you. And and in our limited ability to love, you bringing you in the house is the least that we could do to say, we remember when we were homeless. We remember when we were addicts. We remember what we've gone through. And guess what? Through that, God has completely revolutionized our life, and he could do the same for you. It's mm. really important to teach people. He's not a respecter of persons. So Missions for America is a place we exemplify transformation, really. Yeah. What it's like to live for God. Yeah. And, and so and it's God our is, mission here. And God has brought so many strong, good people, like, just around in the church and around the housing just to help and, and just you know, everything's been growing and we're so thankful. I mean, we just can't say it. Like, we're just so thankful. Wow. Yeah. People, counselors, uh, people giving all kinds of ways, uh, some coming in and just mentoring, uh, giving life skills, help goals. Yeah. These are things that the, house that people need. Our house directors are great, but there, there's even people coming in to spend that quality time with the personal mentoring and things like that. And even some of that could be done remote, but we're, we're just working. And I believe God's really getting ready to, to expand our housing quite a bit. We, we right now have four houses and we're looking to do a program on our church grounds to actually uh, really bring this to another level. Because the goal of everything we do is to watch God touch people's lives so much that they have a brand new legacy. Mm -hmm. Everything changes once mm -hmm. God touches your life. Yes. I hope that's your testimony Woo! because I'll tell you what, we were in such bad peril when Jesus come to meet us. And here we are, uh, you know, blessed to be senior leaders in a church, but even more like God's given us a supernatural school. God's Thank given you, us businesses. God's given us houses. And, and there's great things God wants to do. And all that's coming just from generosity. The more we are generous, the more God is opening doors. It's like when they say you can't outgive God, that's in every area of your life. Yes. If you want to be friendly, guess what? <laughs> Show yourself friendly. If Thank you want you friends, you know? Yes. So yes. it's, yeah, it's true. Okay, yeah. so guys, you know, look, listen, as you're listening to this, you're thinking, well, I could never be like uh, – you know, David and Tracy, I could never have that many people in my home. And, uh, you know, that's just way too much for me. So, but I want to be like that. I want to give, I want to open my heart. I want to be sacrificial. I don't want to be selfish. I want to be focused on the golden people, it, you know, but you're thinking you just can't do it their way, but you know what you can do? You can help them do it. How can people give guys? Because if people can't do it exactly how you're doing it, they can step into that same blessing that God has bestowed upon your church by supporting you with prayer, with financial gifts. Where, where can people give? Well, Katie, that's really nice, and we're, we're so glad to be on this program. Uh, obviously, we didn't come for that, but if somebody has a heart to give, praise God. I know that we support uh, your ministry and your program, and it's a privilege to partner. So if you are interested in partnering in any way, it, it could be prayer partnership. It can be giving. We just want to let you know uh, that it's easy to reach out to us through RHLC. That's Redemption House Life Center. 
rhlc.us slash give. And you can reach us there. You can also uh, email us and contact us directly if you have a desire for that. So our goal is to teach people the pleasure of being a conduit. We didn't start by giving our house uh, away and we didn't start by uh, letting people move in. We started with simple yeses, driving people places, giving people food, and it just kept expanding. And I'm like, the more we give, the more God is radically giving to us. And so I believe this is the season where God's going to just continue to radically expand people's lives. And he's looking for outlets. Mm. And I believe Mm. you give, you become an outlet of the goodness of God. You become a a magnet to the favor of God. And that's not hype. It's not hyperbole. It's things I've personally uh, experienced in radical ways I wouldn't even believe because by the time we were only saved six years, we were giving what we were making. And that's not, that's God saying, I love what you're doing. I love you being a giver. I love you opening your home. And I'm like, this seems impossible, Thank but you. God is so good to us. But I would love to open another home, Katie. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Come on. Okay. So look, guys, we put the address on the bottom of the screen. I really in, uh, encourage you heavily to support this amazing outreach. Look, guys, we only have like a minute left. I need you to pray for people to have the spirit of self-control because if you guys can handle it and be sharpened... After 600 people plus in and out of your house, then everybody else can. So give us a fast prayer because we only have a minute left. All right. Well, Lord, we just thank you right now. We declare, Father, that you are in us. But we ask, Lord, that you will move through us. All of our members would be yielded. So every person online, we declare right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus. the spirit of the Lord come upon you right there as you listen. The Spirit of the Lord would arrest every every habit, every hang-up, every shortcoming, and it would be arrested, and we bind those things, and we say, we lose the Spirit of God to have His way in your life, that you would experience the joy that's in His presence, that you experience the peace that overcomes every a storm and, and bypasses all of our understanding. So, Lord, I thank you, and right now, every person, we declare This is a new season for you. God is bringing the greatest move to the body of Christ, and you are going to experience greatness like you've never seen. Things that you thought were impossible are going to be opening up to you as you say yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pastor Tracy and David, I love you guys. We'll see you soon, and I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. (laughs) 